Perched on top of the tallest mountain in Haiti, and one of the highest mountains in all the Caribbean, epic biologist Adam Brown and Haitian biologist Anderson Jean use an unlikely tool to track an unlikely animal. Up near 9,000 feet, assisted by a group of young locals, the scientists use marine radar to track a mysterious animal flying in from the sea at speeds over 60 miles per hour. Once thought to be extinct, these resilient seabirds are arriving to lay a single egg in small caves that they dig on the extremely steep mountainside. This mysterious bird goes by different names depending on which border it has crossed. Some call it the black-capped petrel, some the Shaywan, and others still the Diablotine. Roughly translated, the little devil. Once numbering in the millions, the black-capped petrel is now endangered. But for some people on the island of Hispaniola, this bird is more than just another species on the brink of extinction. This humble bird is an indicator species, and even perhaps an icon. On one hand, if the black-capped petrel goes extinct, it likely signals the collapse of Haiti's fragile forest ecosystem, resulting in more severe tribulations for the Haitian people. On the other hand, if the species survives, it may be the icon that helps unify an island. Founded 20 years ago by husband and wife team Adam Brown and Natalia Collier, Environmental Protection in the Caribbean, or EPIC, unites organizations to protect wildlife and habitat while working to improve the lives of people. When EPIC first began scientific study of the black-capped petrel two decades ago, they didn't know where it would lead them. Little was known about the species, and many thought it to be extinct. Through a series of small successes, failures, and great partnerships, EPIC became instrumental in bringing new technology to the search for the petrel. That search led them to the island of Hispaniola, where they partnered with Haitian and Dominican conservation teams to track the black-capped petrel. Haiti is a beautiful and complicated place. It's impossible to overstate the strength, creativity, and work ethic seen in the Haitian people. There is also a deep suspicion of foreigners, justified by both distant and recent history. And so EPIC knows it can best serve by empowering people and its local partners. And together, slowly, something truly amazing is happening. When the first petrol nest was found on a steep mountainside in Haiti, near the border of the Dominican Republic, the teams were overjoyed. But that joy was quickly mixed with a sober realization. At the bottom of the steep mountainside, just at the edge of the remaining forest, there were people. The people were working hard just to survive. Starting as researchers, we then moved into conservation. And I'm used to doing conservation work where you create laws, people follow the laws, perhaps you put a boundary up around something to protect it. But in Haiti, that's not the case. Conservation is working with people. The scientists could see that these hardworking Haitian farmers were locked in a life and death struggle to survive. In dire need of farmable land, Haitian farmers go up the mountains clearing them with fire to be able to grow food for their families. Once the trees are gone, the soil only remains fertile until heavy tropical rains hit, washing the topsoil away. As the deforestation grows, so does the volume of mud that slides down at every rainfall, creating a very dangerous situation for vulnerable Haitians living in poorly constructed homes. This canyon is a riverbed carved by millions of gallons of water rushing down from the mountains. Thousands of lives have been lost. Epic and its partners knew immediately that the only way to protect the petrol was to improve the lives of the people living alongside this bird. This is much easier dreamed than done. From the beginning, there was not enough funding or resources. Recognizing that the project extended beyond the abilities of any one organization, EPIC built a coalition of Haitian and Dominican conservation groups. 
humanitarian groups, farmers, educators, storytellers, government leaders, and scientists. The team hired local farmers to protect the birds' habitat, formed local savings groups, began watershed restoration, provided ongoing education projects in the local school, and supported the local soccer team, at times even playing against them, and losing, of course. But all of this doesn't matter if the people don't have water and food. Families depend on farming for food. Their entire crop has often been destroyed by one drought or one tropical storm. Look at the size of this storm on satellite at this hour tonight. Island. A direct and the rain devastating. Real concern now with all this rain, mudslides. Tonight, the most powerful hurricane to hit Haiti in more than 50 years. Because of destroyed crops, families can be forced to cut down trees to make cooking fuel or to sell for water and basic food for their children. Given the circumstances, who can blame them? But each tree lost means less habitat for the bird and less protection from natural disaster for the people. EPIC's approach is to address the immediate needs and at the same time work on long-term solutions. First, people need food and water. EPIC and its partners raised funds to repair and rebuild broken systems, as well as build nurseries to cultivate crops for replanting. Once millions of black-capped petrels lived in the Caribbean and fished throughout the Atlantic Ocean, but now scientists estimate only two to 4,000 individual birds remain. Why does this intrepid bird choose Haiti and the Dominican Republic for its home? No one knows for sure, but we do know that the petrel chooses its habitat at high altitudes on incredibly steep slopes, perhaps to avoid predators and human activity. One of the most incredible things to witness is the night flight of the black-capped petrel making its way back from sea. Sometimes from as far away as the northeastern coast of the United States, or from the coast of Venezuela, or just from the coast of neighboring Cuba. You can only see them with radar or night vision optics, flying at high speeds, home to their nest, where their lifetime mate and a single egg rest. Once close to the escarpment, the petrel's mate will often fly out to meet briefly, the pair circling each other before trading duties, one returning to the nest and the other out to sea to hunt for squid and flying fish. Why does EPIC and its partners work so hard to protect a bird on the brink of extinction? Because together we have a chance to save the black-capped petrel, empower the people and possibly unite an island. The border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic is known for tension and conflict. It can be a complicated mix of economic, social, racial, religious, and political issues. To people around the world, life on the Dominican Republic side can appear to be only marginally better than that on the Haitian side. And yet some young Dominicans feel it is their responsibility to help their fellow islanders. These biologists will hike, hitch rides, or ride motorcycles over the border to count nesting sites and help out the villagers in Haiti. One of those people, Jose Luis, a former poacher, now an artist and field biologist for Grupo Jaragua, is doing what is unimaginable to many, crossing from the green and more prosperous Dominican side of the island to the Haitian side. 
this time to paint murals on the side of the recently completed systems, using his art to help tell the story of the Diablo team. I am an assistant biologist from Grupo Jaragua, and my job is to save the Diablo team. And we don't care what's your nationality, we don't care if you are a Haitian or a Dominican. We need to save the, the nature together because we are two different people, but the island is one, the nature is one. On the Haitian side is biologist Anderson Jean. Anderson has been offered many opportunities to leave Haiti and use his skills around the world. Despite these offers, Anderson chooses to remain. He is committed to using his skills to help his country and his island. As a young Haitian biologist, I realize saving the Diablo team is the best way to solve Haiti environmental problem. It's important to save the mountains, the farmer's land, and also the sea, because everything is connected. Whether it is Grupo Haragua, the Societe Audubon Haiti, Plant with Purpose, the Bukan Chat community, the Haitian Ministry of Agriculture, or storytelling partner Soulcraft All-Stars, everyone is playing a part in this long-term project. EPIC works to empower each group, identify funding, and implement a long-term conservation vision. Land is a commodity that God no longer manufactures. So we have to be conscious that what we have needs to be conserved for our own benefits and for the benefits of our future generation. My vision is to have men and nature live in harmony, Haiti being very rich in biodiversity. So I am committed personally to fight, to educate, and uh, to contribute for the, to the conservation of Haiti's biodiversity. C'est grâce à Diablo Tien, et puis comme ça, tout le monde s'est débarré à mon affaire. Je ne peux pas faire pareil ça, non? Il n'y a pas beaucoup de communauté. Pour tout le monde, il a grandi. Nous même, nous avons été dans la salle de nous parler, mais tout le monde est venu, il est venu. Il faut nous faire avenir pour nous quitter pour tout le monde. Since the project began six years ago, conservationists have become humanitarians, and humanitarians have become conservationists. Poachers and farmers have become biologists, and Dominicans and Haitians are working together, all believing in the future of the petrol, the land, and the people. Some will say Haiti is a lost cause. Epic doesn't believe that. Our partners don't believe that. Titet doesn't believe that and neither do his children. On the contrary, this bird, this family, this country, this island is worth the fight. Epic believes that this lonely spot high atop the mountains of Haiti, where one of the last forests remains, is a glimpse into the future of a world desperately in need of biodiversity, renewable energy resources, and strategic cooperation with nature for our species to survive. What can we learn? Imagine if these methods can save the devil and improve the lives of the people at the same time. Imagine if this bird and what it represents can continue to unite Haitians and Dominicans to work together. Imagine the possibilities wherever humans and animals meet. Follow the story as it unfolds. Oh, 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 God of the universe, I look into the darkest part.